Hello again and welcome to the channel everybody. It's great to have you here. If you're new, please do click that subscribe button down below and check out the entire VATSIM tutorials mini-series in the playlist section to help you get started on the VATSIM network. After you've watched this video and you've given the circle to land procedure a go yourself, uh, let me know how you get on in the comments below. We're on our way to Innsbruck in Austria with its well-known tricky yet scenic approach through the mountains and we're going to be discussing how to perform a circle to land procedure using Innsbruck as our example today and discussing a few things to consider on the way in as well including what to do if we're using VATSIM of course. So the first question, what is a circle to land procedure? Well, by now you'll probably have heard of an ILS approach, VOR approaches and so on. Um, but this is a uh, whole other level, uh, but also requires instrument procedures too. So circle to land procedure is a procedure that we could fly in the simulator if, for example, as we are today, we're flying into Innsbruck and we request or we're assigned a circle to land landing or we're flying in somewhere like Mykonos where the approach charts only show information for runway 34 but the other runway is actually the active one. In that case, again, a circle to land would probably be used. Visual reference points here are key and it can get harder if the weather isn't on our side. As we've got today, uh, lots of clouds and things, we're using live weather. And uh, if the clouds are at minimums and we've got rain and turbulence factored in too, it can get quite difficult but it makes it exciting. Most of it is done using instruments up until that final phase and we'll of course go through that as we make our way in. Um, in the sim of course, it is a little harder because we can't just turn our heads constantly like uh, the pilots can in real life to review reference points out the window and of course we're the only person flying so we'll be doing the work of two pilots uh, all on our own as well. So to begin with we need to make sure we at least understand instrument approaches and uh, be used to how to use the nav display, how to tune frequencies to the VOR, NDB and so on. For today we'll be routing via the Rattenberg NDB for our arrival into Innsbruck and using the special lock DME East procedure for the arrival as well which uses an offset localizer. And this is where the charts uh, become quite important for us. So let's take a look. So then guys as we can see we're going to be flying in uh, sort of this direction at the top of your charts. And we're going to be flying into Rattenberg which is a NDB station which is part of the star that we're using today. One of the entry points into uh, Innsbruck of course. As you can see at the top of the charts, we're using the Innsbruck Austria Special Lock DME East procedure. And you can sort of see what we're going to expect here. So we're going to enter Rattenberg, we're going to fly 210 degrees to Adwig. And uh, we want to be at Adwig at 9,500 foot. We're then turning in for our final approach all the way into the runway. And uh, before we get to that runway, once we hit the RUM NDB, we're going to probably want to break away and fly uh, effectively a circuit and we'll go through it as we get a little bit closer to it and we'll be uh, flying a downwind leg before manually flying in and landing on uh, 08. You can see at the bottom here on the actual approach plates so uh, we've got the Rattenberg NDB at 9500 Advig is the start of our descent on the 19 DME uh, offset localizer and you can see various um, call outs here as well so at each phase here we want to check our altitude and we want to make sure that at 17 DME from OEV which is the uh, localizer we want to be at uh, 8700 foot at 14 miles, 7,500, 9 miles, 5,500, and so on all the way down. Up until the point that we are um, almost at 1,000 foot above the ground, um, and we're pretty much then going to be breaking off and flying that circuit pattern. You could also be using an RNAV approach for this. Um, same sort of procedure applies. You'd be assigned the RNAV approach, likely take you through the valley, and then you would break away once you're cleared for that circle to land procedure. If you're on VATSIM of course uh, you can either request it um, but you, you can only do this if it's authorised by ATC. So let's take a little bit of a closer look and uh, we can use things like Navigraph to try and assist us here uh, in this instance uh, because we actually have a slight visual approach circle to land procedure 
um, chart here. So you can see that uh, from this waypoint, 4.2 from the uh, localizer itself, we branch off. We head out towards uh, some power lines. You can see the power lines there. That's our visual reference points. And there's also a uh, road by the looks of it here. We're going to make our way down and then we're going to head straight up to a church which you can see again here a visual reference point and then when we see three power lines in front of us we want to make a right turn for our final approach usually it accompanies with a lot of information down here as well so uh, it explains having established effective external visual reference between 6.3 and 4.4 DME from OEJ and uh, the missed approach point the flight shall be continued with visual reference either straight into runway 26 or right hand circuit to runway 08 which is what we're going to demonstrate today and of course uh, we have to only do this if it achieves minimums and there's also an Innsbruck VOR um, an Innsbruck NDB 420 we're going to use here too there's our minimum approach uh, for our circle to land with the prescribed flight tracks. We're going to make use of those. And MDA is, of course, what we're going to be using. That church I mentioned, that visual reference point, there's actually a line here Church Axams Visual Cue for start of right base. So we're going to overfly that, and as we pass it, that's our visual cue to turn right for our final approach. So those sort of parts of the charts are really important for scenarios like this. but Things like Mykonos, um, they don't have any of this. So in in the instance, we would pretty much just fly a visual right-hand circuit um, and circle to land with uh, no reference points. We'd have to look out the window and just try our best in the sim, really. Uh, but there we go. Lots of different minimums depending on when we're going to branch off for our final approach. So because we're actually using uh, the Lock DME East arrival to base this upon. Uh, we want that very top circle to land prescribed flight track MDA that after approach 11-1 um, which is actually the lock for what we're going to be using so 5% glide slope is uh, an MDA of 3700 as is a 4% glide slope a 3% and a 2.5% gives us different figures as well so depending on what you're doing and what your profile looks like your MDAs are going to be different uh, but for the purpose of today I will select 4 1400 foot as our MDA uh, just to help for the sake of simplicity so we're going to have to get everything set up in the aircraft so uh, into the flight deck on this particularly icy day train radar of course uh, you want to have on and uh, what do we need to put in here then so we're going to want the Innsbruck NDB let's put that into ADF-1. We've got the treble one decimal one for that OEV localizer and there's a backup localizer in case of missed approach uh, but which we'll make a note of and we'll have to change that um, accordingly if we do have to go around. Uh, although I'm not envisaging it, uh, envisaging it today. Rattenberg and RAM as well for some others uh, so we're going to want to use 320 for the next ADF. We could make use of uh, the NDB. If we're going to enter the hold, for example, we'd want to have the RTT NDB input as well, but um, we're not going to do that today. So we've got the Innsbruck DME. We've got the Innsbruck NDB. And we've got the RUM NDB position for us as well. And hopefully, as we make our way in, you guys will be able to see... Um, the church, the power lines and uh, that, that sort of thing as we make our way in. We know that we want to be at the Rattenberg NDB uh, descending to Advig uh, by 9,500 feet and we have obviously need to put in all of our performance data for our approach. So with the latest Meta, QNH is 1013 Temperature minus one, 
dew point minus nine. Transition altitude is usually on the charts um, if there's no ATC to tell you otherwise. Uh, but it says on the charts by ATC. So um, we'll say for the, the sake of today, 12,000. And our DH, as we discussed earlier, checking on the Navigraph part of things, we're going to use 4,400 today for that MDA. So we're almost entering that um, procedure now. We need constraints and things on as well, of course. And we are pretty much at 12,000, so we'll go ahead and amend that Q&H. So we're going to start our descent uh, to 1,100 foot per minute for the time being. And we're going to make our way into the uh, valley. Wind is at 080 at uh, about 10 knots for the approach. So as we go through the valley, the other thing we need to bear in mind, of course, is the fact that we've got a tailwind to, to contend with as well. So that's going to be pushing us along faster than we expected. But we're going to depart the RTT NDB and we're going to head towards Advig. We're then going to establish ourselves on the localizer and descend on a heading of uh, 255 degrees, which is that runway heading, as the chart showed us. But this is where we have to get really busy because we scan, scan and keep scanning. We've got the terrain data, we've got uh, all the aircraft systems on board as well to monitor and check. And setting up early is going to be real key for us. Should go back into manage now, that should uh, hold us. For our approach, here we go, medium, auto brake because we are um, on a short runway today. If we were going to use an RNAV, of course, we could see everything there as well. Coming up to Advig, uh, 9,500, wasn't it? So we're going to be slightly above. Let's increase that vertical speed. We're going to use a bit of speed brake because uh, that speed's going to run away from us otherwise. thousand five hundred feet uh, passing Advig. We can put it on the uh, ILS mode and that's going to give us our offset localizer. We could go ahead and activate approach phase at this point. LS shouldn't really give us too much but it is a cap on ILS so we're going to monitor that and we need to really keep an eye on this terrain folks. Of course, if we're using a VOR arrival, it'd be a similar sort of process. We'd fly that VOR arrival, uh, Mykonos for example, uh, we would fly in and obtain uh, whatever VOR procedure is in use for that day. Flying over this uh, crest of this hill here, this is where the terrain becomes quite tricky, and then into the valley, straight in for Innsbruck, which is over in the distance. We'd have, of course, been cleared by the controller for that circle to land procedure. And uh, we're active on a glide slope now. So we're monitoring everything. We could probably go flaps two at this point. We need some more speed brake because we are increasing our rate of uh, acceleration there when we don't want to be. If it was a VOR, we would obviously be managing the heading mode and everything as well manually. If it was RNAV, it would be similar to what we're doing now, but we wouldn't have uh, the LS systems or the ILS modes on. But it's instrument all the way until the very end, effectively. So we're established on that localizer. We need to remember our minimum safe altitudes, turn timings, 
looking for that church to turn base, looking for the power lines, so we'll know when we need to drift away from um, our initial approach. We can see at the bottom here the different uh, ADF stations, so RUM is the thick line with the two bars, ADF1 with Innsbruck is the one with the one bar, so as we get closer we're going to want to turn towards the In Innsbruck arrow, and there's uh, the airport there. So we would call up at this point, we've got the runway in sight, and we'll be cleared for the circle to land procedure, runway 08. Probably early for gear down, but it's going to help increase drag on the airframe, isn't it? So. So one of the other issues in the sim, of course, is we might not necessarily see the reference points because we, we rely on the sim actually having them visible for us to be able to action the approach properly. Everything's red on the terrain radar as well around us. We could probably go ahead and turn that off. And remember from the charts, it was 4.2 miles from the airport, so we're at 8.7 at the moment. We want to turn down, drift towards downwind. And uh, we may or may not, in the sim, see things like power lines. But we're going to head off into the uh, that section of the valley. We're going to then fly that downwind leg and then sweep round and into land. We'll look out for the church. We may or may not see it. Let's go full flaps. And you can see when it's set on the charts as a four degree offset localizer, we're actually flying directly towards the terminal building. So you can see there we are offset somewhat. Uh, but that's because we aren't actually flying an ILS approach. It's a, it's, it is a visual approach with uh, instruments helping us, of course. Hundred above. So approaching minimums, but we have got visual of the airport itself. Minimum. We need to keep visual the entire time. So you come off approach mode. Now we want to be turning left. 3,700 is on the charts as our downwind altitude. So let's hold that. And turning left following this uh, road that we can see down below. There's Innsbruck there. We're flying up to this section of the valley for this downwind leg. So it's about 230 degrees on the charts showing us for our um, drift turn. And the road should disappear off in that valley over in the distance looking at the chart. So there's a power line directly ahead that we should be able to see, although I don't think they're built into the sim just yet. Um, there should be one here somewhere. Which we uh, definitely can't see, so uh, not too much of an issue. What we'll do is we're going to fly into this section of the valley and we're going to then fly downwind near the uh, base of this uh, sort of hill, the base of the mountain there. And then we're going to fly downwind all the time, keeping an eye on the airfield. We obviously need to make sure uh, cabin's secure, spoilers are armed for us as well. So 
1,000 foot above the airfield, uh, above the ground from our rudder. We want to turn 264 degrees. Still using the autopilot to assist us. This here should be um, power lines. In fact, there's a couple of power lines we can see, so we are following them. And we might be able to see the church up here in the distance. There's the airfield, still checking that. And we are on downwind. There's some more power lines. Still looking for that church. That's our turn for base reminder. And it should be dead ahead of us somewhere. Again, this is all reliant on um, how good the scenery is uh, in the simulator, of course. I have a feeling that that building there might be the church, but it could be one of these. I'd imagine that big red build, brick building there is the church actually, so we'll use that as uh, our reference point. And now we'll start to turn base. This is where it gets real tricky for us guys. So we're a thousand foot above the ground, we want to start a slow descent. We're turning base at finals of course. We still have to bear in mind we've got all the terrain to contend with. Turning, turning, and as we get over the other side of this ridge, we want to start to bring that altitude down a bit more. There's the runway. Keeping that in sight, flying that base turn. Keeping your altitude, you want two red, two white on the pappies of course. Slight overshoot on the actual turn itself. We've got a 30 degree bank angle though, so we're going to keep that just to get us back on track. And there uh, we've got one red on the Pappy. We want two red, two white, of course. No blue on the ECAM memos. And we're on finals now. We'd have already been given clearance to land on downwind, I would imagine, for the procedure in question. There's our two red, two whites on the Pappy, so glide profile's good. Continue on our descent. Slightly higher, let's bleed this down a bit more. So there we go, quite a tricky little procedure, but a, uh, an enjoyable one on Vatsim of course as well. Trying to configure early, getting your speed off uh, and all that will help uh, you to manage that approach. The slower you're flying of course, uh, the more time you've got to make decisions. And uh, you've got to be wary of the terrain around you as well. So here, for example, at Innsbruck, you've got that hill. As we're turning on our base leg, we've got the uh, top of that hill that we're actually flying over the top of. So um, if we descend too early, then uh, we're going to get real close to that terrain. So there's lots of things to bear in mind. 
But um, there we go, in principle that is the circle to land procedure. So I uh, hope you found it useful, if you've given it a go, let me know how you get on as well in the comments. It's not something that gets done a lot. If you're on VATSIM of course and you want to give it a go, you're flying into Innsbruck, then uh, always, just if they've got con if controllers online, just request it. Um, if they say no, of course, they say no, but um, if they say yes, then feel free to go ahead and it's definitely something that I can highly recommend, something that's enjoyable and uh, a little challenging as well. So, especially in the sim as we saw, we couldn't really see the church, which is our visual reference point for the base leg. But uh, I was looking out for a, a red roof instead and we could see that and that might be, uh, I would imagine, roughly where the sim might have built in a bit of photogrammetry with some odd buildings. Um, so give it a good go. There are certain parts of the sim that do help us, so the expressway visual for runway 31 at uh, LaGuardia, for example, we did on a stream a little while ago. We actually saw the uh, the two white towers that are, were noted on the visual reference points in the chart. So, quite an exciting one, and uh, a fair few Greek islands use the procedure too. And uh, if you've given it a go and you've got somewhere that, that uses the circle to land procedure that you think would be quite exciting, then let me know in the comments where that is as well. Uh, but in the meantime, give it a go. Hope you found it useful. If I've uh, missed something or if you've got any questions, then you could always just uh, ask in the comments below or join us on Discord as well. And uh, do click that subscribe button if you've enjoyed today's video. Now, I'm conscious I don't, I don't want to make long-winded tutorials, so I want to be short and sweet with um, all the basics for you guys to give it a go yourself. So thank you all for watching and see you in a live stream very soon.